Take your Bibles and open them to John the 10th chapter and find verse 11. For just a few minutes this morning, I want us to consider the fourth I am statement of our Lord. I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 11. If you didn't bring a Bible with you today, there's a Bible in the pew rack. And if you'll take that Bible out and find page 896, find page 896, you will find John chapter 10 and verse 11. I want us to read in just a moment verses 11 through 18. John chapter 10, beginning in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Would you pray with me? Would you right now ask the Lord to speak to your heart so that a fresh and new meaning of what Jesus said when he said, I lay down my life for the sheep would fall fresh on you today as we remember that he indeed did just that. Pray for yourself to hear his voice. Now pray for me that I may speak his words true and faithful. Heavenly Father, thank you for just the opportunity to worship today in song, what we've sang and what we've heard. We, we open our minds and hearts now to your word. Let us understand. Give every person here, regardless of their age, an understanding of a shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, raise your right hand and repeat after me. Everybody, raise your right hand. And repeat, that's not your right hand, it's your right, that's your left hand. Raise your right hand. Okay, you got that, okay, you got that up. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. For the next 30 minutes, I am a sheep. I have poor eyesight and I probably need a bath. I tend to follow the group without thinking. I can be very stubborn. I am prone to wonder and go astray. I like to choose my own way. Thank you very much. All of those characteristics are true of physical sheep. 
All of those things I just mentioned, they have poor eyesight, they need a bath, they follow the group without thinking, sheep can be very stubborn, they are prone to wander and go astray and choose their own way. All of those things are true of physical sheep. Can you relate to any of those qualities, spiritually speaking? The truth of the matter is that the Bible calls us sheep on several occasions. And our text today is one of those occasions. This is the fourth of the I am sayings in John's gospel. I am the bread of life, Jesus has said. I am the light of the world, Jesus has said. I am the door, Jesus has said. And here Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. Now, that, of course, is an image that runs throughout Scripture. God is the shepherd of his people or the shepherd of his sheep. It's one of those images that recognizes the uniqueness of the relationship between God and his people. Who doesn't know the first line of the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or even one of the lines from the 100th Psalm, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Throughout the Old Testament, God is seen as a shepherd to his people. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 15 makes it very clear. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, declares the Lord. The shepherd of Israel is Jehovah. The everlasting God. Now here is Jesus standing before us in the pages of John's gospel, standing before a group of men and women that day and claiming, I am the good shepherd. Now when Jesus says that, he is claiming to be the Lord of the Old Testament. He is claiming to be the God of the Old Testament. He is saying, there is no shepherd but me. There is no God but me. I am. That word for God out of the Old Testament. I am the good shepherd. There is no shepherd but Jesus. There is no God but Jesus. And these people standing there that day knew their Old Testaments. They knew their Bibles. They knew that when Jesus was claiming, I am the good shepherd, that he was identifying himself with the God they worshipped. Look down in verse 30. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He just made it very clear to them at that point. And then look at their response. They understand what Jesus is claiming. They get what he's trying to say. Look at verse 31. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? And they answered, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. Now, when Jesus says stuff like that, he's, he's nuts. I'm, I'm the God of the Old Testament. That is what he's telling the people that day. I'm, I am the good shepherd that you've heard about and read in the pages of your, of your Old Testament. I and the Father are, are one. That's just crazy. Or he's lying to us. Or he's telling us exactly who he is. He is showing you and me the truth about himself. Now look and listen. If you wish to see how good a shepherd he really is, you must follow him as he goes to the cross. That is how good a shepherd he is. He goes all the way to the cross. And at the cross, the shepherd becomes a lamb sacrifice to take away the sin of the world. Look again at verse 11. 
I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he is saying that he will provide for all of the needs of the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I will provide for all the needs of the sheep. Now, Jesus might have gone on after that statement and listed and mentioned a few of the needs of the sheep. He said, I'm the good shepherd and I will provide for all of your needs. And so here are some of the things that I, as a good shepherd, will do for you. Because you see, sheep need to be led to green pastures. Sheep need water. Sheep need protection from wild animals. Jesus might have listed some of the things that he would do for them as the good shepherd. But interestingly enough, Jesus passes over all of that and says something totally unexpected. The good shepherd lays down his life. Life for the sheep? Now, in the first century, a shepherd's life had its dangers. David mentions the fact that he once fought a lion and a bear while he was looking after his sheep. And I found it interesting to learn as I prepared for this that the Mishnah, which is a Jewish book of rules and regulations, the Mishnah stated that a shepherd was required to defend his sheep against one wolf. But if more than one wolf showed up, he could flee. He could, he could run. But the Mishnah required that if it was only one wolf trying to attack your sheep, the shepherd was duty-bound to stand there and defend the sheep. Against one wolf. But if there was two or three or four, he's gone. He's he's out of there. And so there were dangers in being a shepherd. But no shepherd ever thought he would die. I mean, I mean, sometimes shepherd might die as an accident. And sometimes as a miscalculation or something, a shepherd might die. But, but no man willingly dies for animals like sheep. Willingly dies for his sheep. This is exactly, though, what Jesus says he does. Is he talking about literal sheep? Or something else. In verse 11, find the word for and circle it. And then again in verse 15, you will find the word for again. Circle those two words. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 15 says, I lay down my life for the sheep. The word for means on behalf of. The word for means as a substitute. The word for means in place of. I lay down my life on behalf of. I lay down my life as a substitute for. I lay down my life in place of the sheep. The root word, though, the root of the word for has the idea of over. O-V-E-R. Over. Now, here's the picture. A blow is about to fall upon a victim and another person comes and throws his body over the intended victim. A blow is about to come upon another victim and a person comes and throws his body over him and takes the blow instead. He takes the blow intended for the first person. Though he is innocent, he receives the other person's punishment because he places his body over over the other one. That's what Jesus does for the sheep. He dies as their substitute, as our substitute, your substitute. He dies in your place that you might live. Remember, you're a sheep. A good shepherd will place his body between the sheep and vicious wolves. The good shepherd places his body between the sheep and the vicious judgment due their sin. 
What does Isaiah 53, 6 said? We had it on the screen just a moment ago. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he, not, he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter. So here is the life point today. Here is where... Your life and this scripture intersects. The point being the shepherd becomes a lamb who willingly lays down his life for the sheep. Who willingly lays down his life for the sheep. Grasp that concept, that statement of fact, who willingly lays down his life for the sheep. Look at verse 18. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. Jesus willingly lays down his life. Even though he will be executed like a common criminal, and even though his hands and feet will be nailed to a wooden cross, Jesus makes it clear that he and he alone has the authority to lay down his life and take it up again. No, my friend, Jesus was not hounded to his death. He was not crucified against his will. And despite the part that Judas might have played, or the Jewish high priest, or the Romans, or even Pilate, nobody took Jesus' life away from him. No one. He laid it down. Down of his own accord, his death was entirely voluntarily. He laid down his life because he chose to do so. He laid it down for you and for me, the sheep. The shepherd becomes a lamb who willingly lays down his life for the sheep. Now, without getting ahead to next Sunday, notice something about verses 17 and 18 with me. Because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one lays it down from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Do you know what that tells me about Jesus? That Jesus always saw the cross and the resurrection together. He never doubted that he must die, and he never doubted that he would rise again. He is making clear his lordship over life and death. And notice one word, it's used twice in verse 18. It is the word authority. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. Some translations use the word power, and that's okay. But that's not exactly the meaning of the word here. Jesus does indeed have the power over death and life. But it is also true that this is not simply raw power or in-your-face power, the power over death and, and life. No, the word authority is a great translation because the word here means that Jesus has the right to die for the sins of mankind. And he has the right to live again, to rise again, conquering death. He not only has the power to do it, he has the right to do so. He has the authority to do so. So later in John chapter 19, when Jesus is standing before Pilate, and Pilate says to him in verse 10, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? I want to say not so fast, Barney Fife. Because listen to what Jesus said to him. You have no authority over me unless it is given to you from above. Shepherd becomes a lamb who willingly lays down his life for the sheep. Dear friend, I've attached my life to the only one who has the authority. 
the only one who has the authority over life and death. That is who I have linked my life with. The only one who has the right to die for my sins. The only one who has the right to live again. And on that third day after his death, Jesus came out of the grave alive. Come back next week. We'll tell you the full story. But for now, the one who has the authority over life willingly lays his down for you. And that's what we remember this morning. That's why we gather around this table. The shepherd who became a lamb, who willingly laid down his life for sheep like you and me. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you today and we praise you for the shepherd, the good shepherd, who lays down his life for the sheep. Thank you, Father, that he took our place. Thank you, Father, that he was our substitute. Thank you, Father, that he died willingly for my sin. It's in Christ's name I pray.